Checking in with our body, let's see how flat ground feels to our muscles and to our bones right now. See if you can settle into a good space. And I know in, within my body, I know it's a pretty good space if my breath can be deeper than normal. I can expand the side ribs outward, even breathing down into the belly. So as we're giving time and space for these deep breaths to flow in and out, we'll take a moment to have an intention so that we kind of have an image in the back of our mind to work with. So the image today is the image of a plant growing. Now think of this plant as it's growing. If it were to have a very weak root system, but it wants to grow really, really tall, it would soon topple over. It wouldn't be able to support itself. But if instead it took the time to focus on growing a really good, very strong root system, then it can grow up very tall and kind of as tall as it wants to grow. And so that's kind of the idea that we're working with today. Ultimately, our idea is to grow, or in other words, to help send some energy higher up to the upper chakras, where we can focus on love and compassion and connection and peace and some of these great ideals of life. But today we're doing that by focusing on our root system. So our very lowest chakras, especially the, the um, root chakra and the sacral chakra. So those two areas are the hips, the hamstrings, and that low back area. So you'll notice all of our different poses today, the majority of them at least focus on those areas. And so what we're going to do is just imagine energetically by helping to stretch those muscles and open up those groups. It's like we're feeding so much energy, so much prana to the cells in that area. So it's like energetically we're setting up that very powerful root system. And so with that image of the roots to lead us on toward our class, let's begin nice and gentle, knees coming in toward the chest. And take some time to figure out what type of movement is helpful? If I'm pulling in tight and then rocking, that tends to be very helpful for getting into some of the low back muscles. Or if instead the knees are a bit higher before I start to rock left and right, that's more on the sacral area. So you get to choose what spot would be perfect. So then let's start to take a nice twist to start off with. So both knees are gonna fall over to the left side together. This doesn't have to be anything forceful. Just kind of let the legs start to go to that side. The top knee doesn't have to touch the bottom knee. It could stay floating if that's the perfect amount for our hips and our, our low back. But just take a few breaths, breathe. Feel what your body's feeling, be with it, respond to it. See if you can get to that perfect amount of stretch. Where does the breath want to flow for us right now? Allow the knees to start rising up and then take as much time as you'd like to begin to take that twist to the second side, gradually falling over to the right. And if there's a placement where your hands feel like they would be helpful energetically, maybe let your hands rest. So maybe this is on top of the IT band. 
or maybe on top of that that femur, that last part of the femur before it connects to the hip. Maybe it's on the low back. And imagine almost like Reiki, just by us placing our hand in that spot, we're kind of helping to energetically support those muscles and connective tissues and bones. Now when the hips return back to the ground, let the knees be inward and then we'll let the feet start to rise up. Legs can be partially straight or all the way straight. It's up to you how high you go, but use your hands to make this a little bit easier than normal. So it's not about kind of muscularly holding the legs up. It's about, you know, just bringing the hands to that spot so that the legs can kind of float easily. And then give the feet a chance to just drain. Anything that's not helpful, it's draining right out of them. Now allow the legs to start opening out wide. This can be with straight legs as we bring our hands to the inner thighs. That could feel nice. If it feels like it's too much work, this can also be with bent knees. The hands still on the insides of the knees to help invite the knees open wide, almost like a frog pose. So your choice in how much effort goes into the legs right now. So one thing I want us to notice while we're here is what it feels like to have the sacrum really flat on the ground. The sacrum's not tilted to the left, it's not tilted to the right, it's very even. So now as we start to purposely bend the left knee and even set the left foot on the ground, the knee going wide, we're going to try to keep this, this sacrum really flat on the ground. Our focus starts to go into this right leg Maybe we're in a good spot where the inner thigh and even the hamstring is stretching, or maybe we want to re-grip and somehow invite this like a little bit closer toward the back wall. So whatever that looks like, we're inviting extra depth into the right side. And then take this right leg directly up to the sky now. Again, it can be straight or it can have some bend, but now it's just the right leg focusing on, focusing on a hamstring stretch.
Now this right leg starts to tilt over to the left, right about a 45 degree angle. This is the point when the hip starts to lift off the ground. So when we get to that spot, we're going to pause. This gives us a chance to allow that IT band to open up just a bit deeper. And then releasing the hand, this right thigh drops onto the left thigh. It's a crossed shape. We're taking an eagle's pose while on our back. So wind the right elbow under the left elbow, trying to wrap the palms. Allow the shoulders to press down away from the direction of the ears. And then if it helps the shoulders to be brought into a good stretch, let the elbows lift and the fingertips try to aim toward the ground right above the head. You don't have to actually touch it today, but that kind of lift of the elbows brings the shoulders into a nice stretch. So take some time to breathe into that space. One more good inhale. And then exhale, the arms unwind. We're going to bring the thighs in this crossed arrangement. Thighs come closer to the torso. We can either grab onto the knees or slide down, each hand grabbing onto each ankle. And just notice some of those hip connections. We're getting a little bit deeper into those areas. So breathe and relax into that space. As our hands begin to relax, we'll leave the knees in this crossed position as the knees take another twist, knees going over to the left. This one can be pretty intense, so don't feel any sort of pressure to get anything to touch the ground. Rather, keeping the shoulders touching the earth, just see how much the knees want to drop down. Notice that the knees are tilting a little bit higher I feel the connection in my hip joint a little bit deeper, or if I start to tilt the knees a little bit lower, it starts to move it towards some of those back muscles. So just be conscious of exactly where we're bringing it and why. Perhaps this is another great chance for one hand to be on, each, on different spots of your body, kind of like that breaky energetic touch to help it out.
here, take one last inhale. And then exhale when the hips go back to the ground, uncross the knees and take any sort of a recovery movement that feels good. This could be knee, uh, windshield wipers. This could be hugging the knees in, rocking around. Whatever intuitively your body feels like would help out to loosen some of that stuff that we just revealed. When that starts to feel complete with the body, eventually we'll allow ourselves to start with the second side. So we start with the knees, both of them stacked more or less together, the knees falling over to the right side. Again, don't feel forceful. If the top knee wants to lift a bit higher, that's fine. Maybe they're stacking all the way. You get to choose the perfect amount. And once again, you have that invitation if you'd like to. Maybe rest your hands on a really good spot that could use some energy. Please come up. Take a moment over to the left. Three more breaths, be conscious of the breath, going clear down into the belly. Then when hips return to the ground, legs straighten up to the sky. They don't have to be all the way straight. Both hands help for a few breaths. Legs begin to open out wide, hands can go to the inner thighs. Maybe knees are bent, maybe legs are straight, your choice. This time we'll start to bend the right knee, even releasing that foot to go on the ground. The knee goes wide to help counterbalance the weight of that left leg. And we take a moment to try to deepen the left leg stretch. Maybe trying to get those toes a little bit closer to the back wall. Maybe just kind of letting it rest open. Whatever feels helpful. And then as leg rises, we turn this into the hamstring stretch, gripping on wherever feels like the perfect spot.
this left leg starts to tilt over to the right side to the point where that hip starts to lift off the ground. I personally like to have my right hand on the outer part of that left thigh. That helps to weigh it down just a hair. Begin to release this left thigh crosses tightly over the right thigh. Almost like an eagle's pose, our left elbow winds under the right this time. Shoulders relax away from ears, and maybe fingertips try to find the ground right above the head. We unwind the arms. We invite the thighs closer so that we can grip onto knees or onto ankles. Good inhale. Ah. Exhale. We release our hands and the knees take that twist over to the right side. Trying to keep it with the crossed position. Remember the knees can be tilting up to a higher angle or down to a lower angle. And that will affect exactly where you're feeling it. So choose and listen. Inhale. Exhale to begin coming out of it. Again, any 
any type of a re recovery pose that will be helpful. Eventually, we'll feel ready to make our way up toward a seated place. So rise up whatever way feels comfortable in the body. The feet will start off planted. We'll give a nice hug around our thighs. Hold that clasp nice and tightly so that you're not losing the touch of it. And then we start to walk one foot forward, then the next. And continue to walk forward until it feels like your torso has to separate from the thighs. That'll be our edge. Imagine breathing into that low back. Helping it out. Placing hands to touch the floor, press into the hands. This will support the spine as it rises up. And then we take our bottoms of feet together like a cobbler. This cobbler can be close or it can be quite a bit further. You choose. Let your spine continue to relax up and over. Supporting the spine through a rise will allow the legs to open out to a figure V shape. It's not forceful wide, it's just a comfortable angle. And if it feels difficult to stay sitting here, let the knees purposely be bent as you start to travel forward. Otherwise, straightening would get slightly deeper to hamstring area. So you choose the appropriate amount. Sitting on something is also a great option. And then continue to relax forward.
walking the hands back in. This left leg is going to be brought to the center just to kind of be a base. And then as we take the right leg inward, we're going to cradle it out. So a hand on the knee, a hand on the foot, or sliding a bit deeper. Rock the hip out a couple of times so that we can get deep into that joint. Loosening up the spots that feel particularly tight today. Eventually dropping this shin to stack on top of the other or this leg to just do a cross leg in front. We'll tilt forward until fingers are on the floor and then continue to slide forward. supporting our journey back up the left leg will stay in front of us the right leg will start to swing around it could either go for kind of a pigeon variation where that that right knee is close to the inner arch the toes on the outside and then we lean forward or some people may continue to travel at part way back or even all the way to full pigeon pose so you choose how far back you would like to go. We continue to lean forward. Make sure that if you do take the full pigeon, your sacrum is nice and comfortable, nice and flat. Just like when we are opening the legs wide when we're on our ground, it's nice and flat. That's the base that we're working on. These spots that fill it intensely, send your breath and your energy and your love to those areas. Reverse our way out of this. So rocking onto the left hip, if you were in the full pigeon, take your time swinging the right leg back around in front. And then when this right leg is forward, take a moment with both feet wide to do a few windshield wipers. Knees left, knees right. Need another round or two, that's fine. Eventually you'll leave this right leg as the base in front of us and we'll cradle out that left side. You choose how many rocks is perfect for this hit. And 
then dropping this shin on top or this leg in front. We'll find the fingers on the floor in front of us and start to slide forward. Enjoy how each and every one of these poses gets slightly different areas. So it gives us a new place to open into. So imagine this is like us being a plant, being that tree, we're spreading our roots and we don't have eyes. And so it's up to us to feel around and find those, those areas in the ground that still have space for us to create that very solid system. Gently rising up from here. This will be that pigeon pose or the variation with the left leg starting to head back. So maybe it's close to the arch of that right foot. Maybe it's halfway back. If you take it all the way back, remember to pick your hips up to set them evenly right in the center. start to head out of this one, we'll end up in a kneeling posture. So eventually take the knees underneath the body. Give the body some recovery time. So this could be shaking the hips left and right. This could be doing hip circles going forward and backward. This could be more like a cat cow rocking that sacrum in, hugged in and arching back. Here we'll spend just a, a little bit of time, just a couple of breaths to each side doing a lizard pose with kind of free form. So this right foot will step to the outside of right hand. The big thing to start off with is hips going forward, but from here you've got some freedom. So you could turn the toes outward and kind of push that hip open for a moment. You could turn the toes um, to the front of the mat and drop down to elbows. You could kind of wiggle around. 
So we won't be here too long. Just a couple of breaths to give the front of the left hip that psoas, as well as this right side a chance to really ease into some things. Good. So one more deep breath in. Out. And we'll gradually unwind this side. Take this right hand underneath us. And set that left foot forward. Same thing. So the real important thing is sinking forward first. But then from there, we've got some free form. Maybe that left knee goes outward. Maybe we go to elbows. Just play around and enjoy what you're experiencing. One last inhale. Exhale, the leg comes underneath us. From this neutral tabletop position, we'll float the right arm up to the sky. Pause long enough to do a few nice wrist rolls, easing into any tension that might be there. And then when you're ready, thread this right shoulder down, trying to get the shoulder onto the ground. This left hand, it has some options. It can walk up to the top of the mat. It could wind around the low back. Choose something that's helpful in the shoulder area, or maybe you're enjoying the twist in the low back. Just kind of enjoy what's going on. Find a good spot to be. Inhale. Exhale. This left hand goes in front of the face. Press into it. And give the spine or the hips a couple of wiggles before we switch sides. Eventually, left arm, when you're ready, will reach up high. Do a few wrist rolls. And thread that shoulder under and through. Choose the perfect spot for the right hand, reaching forward or winding around the low back. One more inhale. Exhale, unwind. A few more wiggles. When that feels good, head back for a little bit of time in child pose. This can be close knee or wide knee child pose. The arms could be forward or tucked back. Choose the pose that feels okay in your hips and in your body right here.
One more deep belly breath in. And as that inhale turns into an exhale, we'll gently help our body rise. At this point, take any last stretches your body might love. Maybe these are seated stretches, shoulder stretches. Maybe you're traveling onto your back for a couple of wiggles, a couple of last movements, happy baby, or a twist. So continue to explore. Do any of these last things that feel good until your body tells you, yes, I'm ready to take my Shavasana. And until you reach that point, keep on moving and wiggling. Our Shavasana today, imagine that your breath is the last little thing that your body needs, that your lower chakras need to be fully charged and fully healed and fully energized. So see if you can send your breath clear down into the low belly, imagining that the lower you can get your breath, the more it's helping to aid that, the roots of our body. So deep, slow inhales. Just let the exhales gradually release. No rush, no force, just relaxation.
Begin to deepen the inhales and the exhales. Introduce little movements back to the fingers and toes. Ankles and wrists. Stretching out like we're waking up first thing in the morning. Eventually rolling off to a nice fetal position on one side. Enjoying two or three good deep breaths. Until sooner or later, you feel ready to rise up to a comfortable seated position. So as we rise, sooner or later, we'll join our hands together in front of our hearts. Feel how they are at this moment, how spacious, how healthy, how broad. And so with our intention of continuing to strengthen our roots so that we can eventually send more energy up the rest of the chakras, up the spine, with this idea of health, and greater connection to love, compassion, peace, to help lead us on. Let's wrap up the time we got to share together this evening with the sound of OM. Deep inhale together now. OM. OM. May we be filled with light and happiness and peace. Namaste.